In this video, we're going to take a look at combining pan pastels with traditional pastels in a landscape drawing. We'll first develop the background using pan pastels, and then we'll develop the middle ground and the foreground using traditional pastels. Pan pastels are a new product that come in these small pans and are applied using specialized brushes and foam applicators. We're going to be working on Canson Mitant's paper for this, and I'm working on the less textured side of the paper. The paper I'm working on is a blue-gray paper. We'll start by mixing white and blue to create a base tone for the sky. We'll add a few streaks in that sky with the blue to indicate a few clouds. Now our sky is going to have some purples and pinks in it, so we're going to mix up some pinks here using a bit of red and white with just a touch of purple and blue. And I'm mixing all of these within the cakes in my pan pastel set. When I'm finished with the painting, I can simply turn the cakes upside down and it will remove any of that mixing that I didn't want to occur or any of that contamination that might occur within the pans. Next, I'm gonna start establishing some colors for the middle ground and the foreground. And these are just preliminary colors. We're gonna go over the majority of these sections using traditional pastels. I'm gonna mix a bit of phthalo green with some blue and just a touch of brown and black to produce these colors here. These are going to represent trees that are far off in the distance. With this area established, we can start to add some of the highlights and create a little bit of the illusion of light that's necessary in the painting. I'll also use one of the special applicators with some black to create a few branches of the tree here in the middle ground. With the black on the applicator, I can go over the green that I've added for the leaves of the tree, making sections darker. We'll continue with this color to indicate another tree that exists in the middle ground. Freshly loaded with black, I can create the branches for a third tree in the middle ground. Next, with yellow and white and just a touch of green mixed on the applicator, I'll create a few highlighted areas. And I can also indicate some of the leaves that exist on the third tree in the middle ground. When you're applying the pan pastels, you can touch the surface just like you would with a paintbrush. A lot of people enjoy the pan pastels because they marry the two mediums of traditional soft pastels and painting. One of the noticeable drawbacks for using pan pastels is the fact that it's hard to get strong areas of contrast or defined lines. This is why we're going to use traditional soft pastels in this landscape. I'll go ahead and put some lighter values in the water area. Of course, many of these are gonna be developed with the traditional pastels. I'm gonna be using Rembrandt soft pastels for the rest of this demonstration. We'll start with a very light yellow green, and I'll start to push some of the highlight areas in the middle ground. I'll also use a purple for many of the shadowed areas, including the trunks and branches of the trees. Although I'll initially define the trunks and the branches with a dark brown or black, I'll still use the purple on the shadowed side of the tree. This will help push a secondary scheme in the finished painting of purple, green, and orange. Using a white, I'll define the small house that exists in the middle ground. When you're working with pastels, it's important to understand that some of your details will need to be implied. This means that you don't need to get too obsessed over making all the intricate details that you might see in your subject. Instead, rely on the contrast and value in the contrasting colors to give the illusion of the object that you're drawing. Although we've already used black in this painting, and we'll use black again in a moment, you should always look for opportunities to substitute other colors for black. In some areas of the painting, I'll use dark brown and blue, or maybe a combination of these colors to produce a more natural black. 
when I can't produce the dark enough value that is needed for that area, then I'll use black as is the case here. Purple is used to go over some of the trees in the extreme distance. This will make them look like they're further away. It's also a lighter value in this location. In the middle ground, however, we can push the contrast, working dark values against light values. This will help make the middle ground appear closer than the trees that are far off in the distance. Now we can continue our work in the middle ground. The area of trees that we are addressing now are closer than the trees that we just finished. We can add more details in this area with the traditional pastels. If you'll remember, we work this area less using the pan pastels. This is because we knew that this area needed to be developed with more precise details. So as we add the marks with the traditional pastels, we'll use less blending and we'll let some of the marks just lay on the surface. Again, this will help to create the illusion that this area is closer to the viewer. We can see more of the branches in this section. The branches are created with a dark brown, and then here again, we'll go over that with a purple. There is a higher level of contrast in this area as well, so we'll use the light yellow green right next to areas of black. Highlights are also more easily visible in these sections. We'll use a cream color to create highlights on the trunks of the trees. Now we'll address some of the tones that exist in the water. We'll start here with a pink color. Marks made in the section of the water are horizontal. Any blending that occurs is also horizontal. This will help further the illusion of natural looking water. Some of the colors that we used in the middle ground will also be visible in portions of the water. Higher levels of contrast are also visible in the water the closer they are to the viewer. A dark brown is used to push some of the visible darker values in portions of the water. We'll continue to develop the water as we work our way into the foreground, but for now we'll go ahead and add a boat sitting in the middle of the water. In this case, we'll start with a phthalo green to establish the shape of the boat. The inside part of the boat will be white. Now using a cool darker gray, we'll start to affect some of the values of the boat. We'll also use a bit of black here. We'll use blue, black, and a bit of brown to establish some shadow that's cast on the water underneath the boat. We'll also use this dark blue over the top of the areas of the black to tone them down. Right at the bottom of the boat, there is a strong white line, so we'll add that with a white. Next, we'll add a small dock that makes its way out to the boat in the water. We'll start by establishing the shape with cream, then we'll go over the top of that with raw sienna. We'll start to establish some of the shadowed areas on the dock using a dark brown. We'll use just a bit of orange to create a few highlighted areas and to create a little bit of contrast. A hint of purple is also used in the shadowed areas. Blue is used to tone down the shadow, and black is used to intensify it. We'll go over the top of that black with brown to make sure that it's not too strong of a shadow. A bit of shadow is placed underneath the dock where it's cast in the water. We'll add a bit of lighter value around the shadows to increase the contrast. In this case, a light cream is used. We'll also do the same thing with a light blue for the same reason. Now we can create the shapes necessary for the areas of grass growing up from the pond. 
we'll use a yellow-green to establish these areas. Then we'll create a bit of shadow within them using a black. This black is worked into the green, mixing and creating a darker value of green. We'll also use phthalo green to add a bit of variety to these grassy areas. And to create the illusion of light, we'll use a very light yellow green to create some highlights. We'll add a bit of orange inside of the grassy areas to indicate the base part of the roots of the grass. And we'll also use a very light purple on areas of the dock to create a more natural appearance. The last touch is to add a bit of pink to areas in the water. And then our pastel painting is complete and can be fixed using your favorite fixative. I hope this video helped you out. If you enjoyed this video and you're ready to learn more, why not check out four video courses, live instruction, and over 6,000 minutes of art instruction, which include ebooks, live lessons, lesson plans, and more. Just click on the button to learn more now.